So in this lecture, we continue with uh, the notion of gradient. We start with uh, the definition of gradient, and then we talk about some of the common gradients. We we'll also showcase some of the examples of how we can calculate and find gradient of a given function. So this is part two and the last part of gradient. First, we start with definition of gradient of a scalar valued function, then gradient of vector valued function. So in general, gradient of function f is denoted by nabla f. So this symbol is nabla. So nabla f is gradient of function f and it is a vector that contains all its partial derivatives. All right. Let's see a more formal definition. Even a function f, which is a real, which is a scalar values function, the input is vector of n dimension and the output is a scalar. The gradient of function f is calculated as follows. Great. Uh, partial derivative of f with respect to x1, with respect to x2, and with respect to xn. So your function f of x is f of x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub n. This is the n-dimensional space. And this is how you can find the gradient. So gradient is a vector. The dimension of gradient is the reverse of product of the dimensions of the spaces of our function. So the dimensions of the space are n and one. So n by one, the reverse order, one by n. So it's a row vector. All right. Now we want to see how we can find gradient of vector, a vector valued function. The gradient of a vector valued function, which is from the n dimensional space to the m dimensional space, is called the Jacobian. And it's a matrix of all first order partial derivatives of the, of the given vector valued function. So, how does this work? So, we have function f defined as f1 of x1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub n. F2 of x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub n, and so on. F sub m of x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub n. This is your function. And now you want to find the gradient the gradient of this function with respect to x. So the first row of Jacobian matrix is gradient of f sub one, which is partial derivative of f sub one with respect to x sub one, partial derivative of f sub one with respect to x sub two, and partial derivative of f sub one with respect to x sub n. This is how we can calculate the Jacobian matrix. Again, we find the dimensions of the Jacobian matrix in the same way that we did for our scalar valued function. So our function is from Rn to Rm, so it's n by m in the reverse order, so m by n. So this matrix is m by n dimensional. All right, now that we have an idea of the definitions of gradient for both a scalar valued function and vector valued function, let's go to the common gradients. There are some common defined gradients that we can use uh, 
that helps us to simplify some of the complicated tasks. For example, gradient of f of x transpose is equal to finding the gradient of f of x and then find the transpose of that gradient. Gradient of trace of f of x is equal to trace of gradient of f of x. These are some of the common gradients, uh, but before uh, you go over these gradients, I would like to do something. I want to show you two examples, one for a vector valued function and one for a scalar valued functions. All right, so example, we have f of x sub one and x sub two is defined as, defined as x sub one to power three plus x sub one, x sub two square. And we want to find gradient of f of x sub one and x sub two. All right, so gradient of f is defined as partial derivative of f with respect to x1 and partial derivative of f with respect to x2, which means partial with respect to x sub 2, x1 power 3 plus x1, x2 squared is equal to 3 x1 sub 1 to power 2 plus x2 to power 2 and 2 x sub 1 x sub 2. All right, so this was gradient of a, a, a scalar valued function. Now let's define a function f. Uh, this is a vector valued function. F sub one of x one and x two, F sub two of x one and x two. And we define them as x one minus two x two square, x two. All right. Now we want to find gradient of this vector valued function. How we find it? Partial derivative of F, F sub one with respect to x1. Partial derivative of f sub 1 with respect to x2. Partial derivative of f sub 2 with respect to x sub 1. And partial derivative of f sub 2 with respect to x sub 2. So let's find them one by one. Partial derivative of f sub 1 with respect to x1, which is 1. f sub 1 with respect to x sub 2 which is minus four x sub two. F sub two with respect to x one, zero. And partial derivative of F sub two with respect to x two, which is one. So this is the Jacobian matrix, which represents the gradient of uh, vector valued function F with respect to x sub one and x sub two. All right, uh, let's just take a quick look at these special cases. Uh, you can use these scenarios when uh, you want to simplify a given uh, partial derivative or gradient in some cases. So some of the important ones that you may uh, come across in the future, one is here, when you have vector A, vectors A and B, as well as variables x. So partial derivative of A transpose x inverse B with respect to x is equal to minus x inverse transpose AB transpose x inverse transpose. This is one. The other one which might be uh, useful in the future is 
partial derivative with respect to x of x transpose a is equal to a transpose. So if I want to show this in one dimension, that's like partial derivative with respect to x of 2x. Here, 2 plays the role of a. So it's, the result is going to be 2. And again here, when you have a transpose x with respect to x, the result is a transpose. When you have partial derivative with respect to x of a transpose xb, it's going to be a b transpose. And then you have the variables x transpose b x with respect to x. So here b is a matrix. So it's going to be x transpose b plus b transpose. Uh, what does this look like in uh, one dimensional space? It's like partial derivative with respect to x of x b x. She is partial derivative with respect to x, x square b, which is going to be 2b multiplied by x. If I want to follow this, x is still x, x transpose is x, b is b, and b transpose is also b, because b is a scalar, which is nothing but 2bx. And last but not the least, then you have a symmetric matrix w, x minus a multiplied by s transpose w x minus a s with respect to s is going to be minus two x minus a s minus a s transpose w which was our symmetric matrix a. All right, in gradients part two, we talked about gradient for a scalar valued functions. How do we define them? Let's say function f of x sub one, x sub two, x sub n. Gradient of f, function f with respect to vector x is equal to partial derivative of f with respect to x one, partial derivative of f with respect to x sub two, partial derivative of f with respect to x sub n. And for vector valued function, f from Rn to Rn, from n dimensional space to m dimensional space. So our function is defined as f sub one of x sub one x. f sub two, x sub one, x sub two, x sub n, and f sub m, so we have m outputs, x sub one, x sub two, x sub n. So the gradient of uh, this vector We have partial derivative of f1 with respect to x sub 1. Partial derivative of f sub 1 with respect to x sub 2. Partial derivative of f sub 1 with respect to x sub n. Partial derivative of f sub 2 with respect to x1. Partial derivative of f sub 2 with respect to x2. And partial derivative of f sub 2 with respect to x sub n. And finally, we have partial derivative of f sub m with respect to derivative of f sub m with respect to x sub n. That was all for the gradients. We may use them in the future uh, modules of this course, but at this point, this is all that we want to know about the gradients.